So we all know the Quentin Tarantinos and the Martin Scorsese's and the Steven Spielbergs. Who doesn't? Their movies have shaped our childhoods and personalities. But their individual movies may be what isn't shapes their legacy. Maybe it's the impact that they made on cinema as a whole. Their contributions to the current state of cinema is a topic to be discussed in another time. But today I wanted to highlight 10 film directors who I believe have and will impact filmmaking and are pivotal for the future of cinema. I'm going to keep this list a good balance between subjective and objective. I don't have much of a criteria here, but I just wanted to include directors that have roughly less than five feature length films and released films. All the directors on this list have at least one or two theatrically released feature length films. I wanted to list out directors that have impacted film in its current state, but their contributions will continually impact cinema as a whole for years to come. In no order either. I just thought I'd put that part in too. Ari Aster. What a weirdo. Isn't he the guy that made his thesis film about a son sexually molesting his father for years? But he's the guy who made Midsummer and what's that? The best supernatural horror film ever? What's it called? It's um, uh, the, the one with the mother. I your mother oh yes that's right yeah i know that one hereditary so anyways this guy is a weirdo but he makes great films though with his first two feature length films he has broken into this new age of modern horror films with not only incorporating interesting visuals and brightest colors and darkest shadows but adding a new level of unsettling nature to his films ari aster is and continues to push the boundaries of what horror movies can be defined as and kudos for making Bo is Afraid, his new movie starring Walking Phoenix. What a pair. Just a couple of weirdos making movies. Not only are we seeing a new age in the horror genre, but just cinema in general. July 21st, mark your calendars. Barbie, let's go. Oh, what's that? Lady Bird and Little Women before this too? Who directed all these great movies? Martin Scorsese? A woman? Well, that makes sense. Greta Gorig, everybody. You know, I remember Christmas Day 2019. My mom and I went to the cinemas and sat down and watched Little Women. I didn't really understand the impact it had on me at first, but looking back, wow. Cinema. No, for real, this industry is saturated with men making movies, and I think it's really cool that Greta Gorig has been consistently making good movies. And the thing is, she's branching out. She went to a modern day coming of age story starring beautiful women to an 1800s coming of age story starring beautiful women, now to a plastic toy coming of age story starring beautiful women, Greta Gorwig has already cemented herself as one of the better female directors of this century, and I cannot wait for cinema to come back in July. Speaking of beautiful people, Olivia Wilde, world-renowned director for one of the movies of all time. Don't worry, darling. Look, I'm sorry, I wasn't the biggest fan of this movie, and honestly, neither was the cast. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen such unnecessary controversy around a movie, but Olivia is the same person who directed Booksmart, and I really like that movie. In fact, I like it more than a certain someone's modern day coming of age story starring beautiful women. But yeah, Olivia Wilde has so much potential, but I do think she tried way too much of a big leap from going from a small, low stakes, fun, goofy movie all the way up to whatever this is. So in the future, because I know she can write, act, and direct, she 100% will be one of those directors to be known as in the future that took big swings and made interesting movies that may be outside of somebody's comfort level. 2020 Sexiest Man Alive turned Creed 3 director. Holy cow, Michael B. Jordan, what a directorial day view. You know, he did such a good job directing his very first movie that practically immediately they gave him the directing credit for Creed 4. I mean, that's what you do for a guy that gave you shots like this. Or because maybe Creed 3 has made the most money of out of all of the Rocky movies. His action scenes and scenes of drama and emotion are so well crafted. I'm just excited to what Michael B. Jordan does in the future. Yes, the Creed 3 movie did very well at the box office and well received. But honestly, the success, I think it all started in starring in Fruitvale Station under the director Ryan Coogler. The same guy who helmed both Black Panther movies in the first Creed movie. He also has experience in good superhero movies and bad superhero movies too. Look, I just love to see... Michael B. Jordan's notebook, if he has one. I just love to see what he has written there from the multiple and vast experiences he has taken and notes that he has. 
probably out of left field for some of you, but I like the menu. I saw something in this movie that seemed very grown and professional, especially for a director whose last movie was in 2011, in a rom-com at that. So when I watched the menu with heavy hitters like Ray Fiennes, Anya Taylor-Joy, and Nicholas Holt, I was not expecting what we got. A social commentary on how we consume and judge art and not have it feel preachy? Holy cow. And the movie also had off-putting thriller elements, but still keeping the focus on the movie on food. Genius. I'm excited for what Mark Mylod does next, whether he makes another movie about sometimes we just want a cheeseburger or it takes another eight year hiatus. All right, Jordan Poole is a household name by now. Got to start off in comedy, now making high level horror thriller movies. Sounds like somebody that I know. I wasn't the biggest fan of Nope or Us, but just like everybody else and their mother, I like to get out. However, this is what I'll say. The technical achievements that he made through his filmmaking are insane. Like how, how, how did he get these shots? Look, I gotta give the man his flowers. And even if he is a racist, no, for real, I want Jordan Peele to keep making elevated horror movies and keep pushing the boundaries of technical filmmaking, even if the Academy won't recognize it. But here's one movie that the Academy did recognize. Everything Everywhere All at Once might be the greatest film of all time. Sci-fi comedy family drama, 139 minutes of just pure cinema, and honestly, I bet good old Marty would say the same. I love this movie so much that there's no way anyone else could have directed this movie other than the guy who directed The Death of Dick Long. <laughs> What's that? There's two of them? His name is Daniel too? Man, that's cool. They should have a cool nickname for them, like something like The Daniels. Yeah, that'd be cool. Amazing visuals, heartfelt story, relatable characters, multiversal wars. This movie truly is an anomaly and so beautifully well crafted. It just gets me excited for the future that these guys have showing everyone that your movie doesn't have to be a color drought or actress screaming for Oscar nominations. All it has to be a true and personal story about growth and acceptance and tell that story in interesting ways. That's what movies can be. Now and going forward, maybe for all time, Everything, everywhere, all at once. You know, 2022 was a weird year. US and China tensions grow. Britney Griner detained Elon Musk buys Twitter. But most of all, we learned that men are bad. What did we do to deserve not one, but two movies about how men are bad? Between you and me, only one was good though. And no, not the one directed by the same guy who directed sci-fi classics like Ex Machina or Annihilation. Now we talking about the top men hater, Zach Krieger. Barbarian was crazy. And it had all the good things in a horror movie have. Incest monsters, Bill Skarsgård being creepy, expertly crafted tension within the first 45 minutes of the movie, and worst of all, Detroit. Barbarian was so cool, so good, so weird, so creepy, so unsettling, and brought this vibe of genuine terror. And the story shifts 45 minutes in, and that was so cool. Sorry I spent all my life watching stupid little dumb superhero movies, but I really did like this twist. Yeah, so Zach Kreger, make movies about women are bad next time. Come on, please. La La Land. Yeah, okay, so last we have Robert Eggers. I'm just kidding. No, for real, that's all I gotta say. La La Land, Whiplash, that one space movie with Ryan Gosling, and his newest, the greatest box office achievement of all time. No, I'm just kidding. I like Damien Chazelle, and yes, he should have taken home that Best Picture Oscar. Guys, guys, I'm sorry. No, there's a mistake. There's a mistake. Moonlight, you guys won Best Picture. But you know what's better than an Oscar? Being on my top 10 directors that are pivotal for the future of cinema. I love this guy. He seems so down to earth and just eager to make movies. He brought back adult movie musicals with La La Land with amazing choreography and cinematography. Pulled out of a career defining performance out of J.K. Simmons and Miles Teller uh space and any movie with margot robbie is for sure to make a tons of money oh shoot what happened you guys didn't go see this movie margot robbie brad pitt same guy who directed your theater girlfriend's favorite movie unreal unreal damien chazelle mixes the joy of several music genres with beautiful cinematography and stellar performances from a range of actors while still using unique set pieces and dynamic lighting. I swear, Hollywood, if you kick this guy up because he made a movie about how bad you are, I'm going to lose it. 
Okay, now it's Robert Eggers time, baby. Let's go. Just look at this guy. Of course he directed The Lighthouse. I wouldn't trust anyone else to make that movie. I love Robert Eggers in all of his films. They're so cool and fun to watch, but so not fun at the same time. They're all so dark and black and white, sometimes literally. His lighting, his stories, his The Northman. Man, I swear this was crazy. I loved this movie, and it was just not marketed well. It was marketed as this Avengers Endgame like, ah, uh, like, uh, this is Robert Eggers' movie. Bro got Robert Pattinson and Willem Dafoe to act goofy for 100 minutes, and it works. Keep giving this guy big budgets. Let him tell crazy, dark, gloomy stories, the ones that he wants to tell. And please let him have Robert Pattinson have sex with a mermaid again. And oh yeah, let him market his own movies too. Please, Hollywood. Thank you guys so much for listening, watching, for rocking with me, and just talking about the directors who I truly believe are on the up and up and upcoming and either coming into their prime or already in their prime. I'm so excited to see what all these directors do next and I truly believe all of them are doing something different and unique, adding their own creative elements to their films that will inspire generations of filmmakers to come. Thank you guys so much for listening, watching, having fun with me. List my top 10 directors that I think are going to change the future of cinema and movies as a whole. If you don't agree, I don't care. If you do agree, don't care. Leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to my podcast on Spotify, and subscribe to the Patreon. Thank you guys so much for listening, watching, having fun, and I'll see you guys in the next YouTube video or podcast episode. Thank you very much.